Each time you see a truck driving down the road, a container ship sailing across the ocean, a freight train passing through a railway crossing, or a cargo plane landing at an airport, you might wonder what magical system keeps these supply chains running. The answer is the ERP or Enterprise Resource Planning. My name is Jamil Hai and I'm your supply chain coach with more than 20 years of experience across South Asia, Middle East and North America. And since I made the video on the top five supply chain systems where I briefly covered the ERP, I've been getting a lot of questions about how does the ERP work? How it's connected to the supply chain? What are the different modules? Who are the key players? And most importantly, how is AI changing the face of ERPs? So do subscribe to my channel and watch this video till the end because I'm going to cover all these aspects of the ERP in this video. And if you are preparing for a supply chain job interview anytime soon, you should definitely book a session with me because I'm going to take your resume, the job description you're applying for, and based on a combination of those two and my two decades of experience, we'll give you some laser guided tips and tricks which will maximize your chances of success. So go ahead now and book your session. Now, ERP is the backbone of any supply chain. The fundamental function of the ERP is financial management. However, that financial management cannot happen without a core integration with all the supply chain systems. So if you look at this graphic over here, you can see the connectivity of the ERP with all the different systems in an organization. It's definitely connected with all the supply chain systems, whether they are sourcing systems, which is basically the supplier relationship module, or the customer relationship modules, planning systems, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. It's also connected to systems other than supply chain systems like human resource management systems or asset management systems uh, and contract and project management systems because all the transactions which are happening in any organization must be processed and routed through the ERP for a seamless flow of information. And talking about information, Let's look at this graphic as we go a little bit deeper into the connection between the ERP and supply chain. Now, if you think about supply chain, there are basically three types of flows happening in any supply chain between the supplier and the customer. So these three flows are product flow, which is flowing from the supplier to the customer, the information flow, which is flowing both ways because suppliers and customers are talking to each other, and cash flow, which typically would flow from customer to the supplier. And the ERP is sitting at the center of all these flows. And the way this becomes possible is that your enterprise resource planning software is connected to all your supply chain systems. So for example, it's connected to your planning system because your planning system is deciding how much raw material are you going to be ordering, how much of that raw material will be connected, converted to finished goods. And all those transactions are being processed through the ERP because if you are placing an order to a supplier for a raw material order, while the planning system is telling you how much to order, but the invoicing of that raw material, the financial processing, the cash flow of that raw material is all going to be channeled through the ERP. Similarly, it's also connected to your warehouse management system because let's say you are shipping a truck to your customer. Once that truck is shipped and that transaction is recorded by the WMS that this quantity has gone and the inventory is deducted, all of those inventory adjustments needs, need to be passed on to the ERP so that there is no issue between the WMS data accuracy and the ERP data accuracy. Because at the end of the day, the single source of truth for financial information is the ERP. So if you ship, let's say, five boxes less or 10 boxes more, that overage or shortage has to be reported through the ERP so that the right financial accounting can take place. Similarly, it's also connected to your order management system because while the order management system is controlling your magnitude of the order, the quantity specifically, and all of those kind of things, but once that order is placed, the ERP needs to know which customer it's going to because there are different price points for different customers. You might be selling the same product at different prices to different customers and that information about pricing sits in the ERP. And then on the same vein, transportation management system is also connected to the ERP because all your carrier information about your freight, all the needs to be passed on to the ERP as well. Now talking about the key players in this space of ERPs, the biggest name is SAP. 
uh, by far it's a German uh, software company. It's primarily known for its ERP solution. But then there are other players as well like Oracle NetSuite, there's Microsoft Dynamics, there's Infor. Uh, and all of them have uh, different uh, specialities. So for example, if we look at S4, HANA or SAP, uh, they are the market leader for manufacturing uh, and large enterprises. The bigger the company, the more likely it's going to be using SAP. Uh, and it's known for its uh, comprehensive uh, functionality and scalability. Oracle NetSuite is more popular among mid-sized and global companies offering cloud native uh, architecture and financial management. Uh, Microsoft Dynamics is more popular with mid-sized, maybe small size companies as well. The beauty of Microsoft Dynamics is that because it's a Microsoft product, it's very well connected to the Microsoft Suite. Uh, so it has great integration with Office. Uh, and that makes it uh, relatively an easier to use uh, ERP system. Then there are some other players as well, for example, Infor, um, Cloud Suite. Uh, they are known for their strong presence in the industrial sectors with specialized uh, industry specific solutions and deep manufacturing expertise. You've got Epicor, which is gaining ground in specific industries with focused capabilities and modern user experience. Now, if we talk about the core modules of an ERP, and let's take the example of SAP, Dynamics, and in 4 Cloud Suite, and you can see this on the screen over here. Um, the core modules are these four. Uh, every ERP will have more than this to offer. There are a lot of different modules that different uh, sort of software offer. However, without some of these core modules and ERP is not an ERP. So for example, financial management has to be a core capability of an ERP system because without financial management, like I said earlier, the basic fundamental function of an ERP is financial management of the organization. And that is why most of the time, whenever you will see that there is an ERP implementation happening, nine out of 10 times, the finance team will be leading that implementation. It's not the supply chain. Yeah, supply chain will be supporting, of course, they will be playing a very integral role in the implementation itself. But the ownership lies with finance because at the end of the day, finance is the custodian of all the governance and transactional uh, financial transactional data. So for example, if you look at uh, SAP S4 HANA, they have got uh, something called the FI module for financial accounting, uh, the CO module for controlling, the TR module for treasury. Uh, similarly, Microsoft Dynamics has got their Dynamics Finance uh, and Business Central uh, module for the financial management piece. And then you've got N4 Cloud Suite, which has got the general ledger, accounts payable, accounts receivable. So they might be calling these by different names, but fundamentally this whole covers the financial aspect. Similarly, going to the procurement and supplier management modules in S4 uh, uh, HANA or SAP, you've got MM, which is the materials management, uh, SRM, which is the supplier relationship management. On the dynamic side, you've got procurement and sourcing, intelligent order management. And then on in four cloud seed, you've got procurement and supplier, uh, supplier management. On the manufacturing and production side, in uh, SAP, you've got PP, which is production planning, PM, which is plant maintenance, QM, which is quality management. Uh, and then you have got similar modules in Dynamics and uh, Infor. Uh, finally, you've got the sales and customer management. So you've got SD, which is sales and distribution, which is kind of a module which is shared between supply chain and sales because supply chain is responsible for distribution. You've got CRM, which is customer relationship management. And then you have got similar modules in Dynamics and Infor Cloud Suite. So like I said, these are the four fundamental modules. And then there could be a lot of other modules which offer more advanced analytics and especially with the advancements in AI, there is more of these uh, additional modules which are coming up. Now talking about AI, there are some key AI enabled capabilities that the ERPs are beginning to offer or they are exploring them. For example, predictive analytics. So you can leverage advanced algorithms to anticipate trends, enable data-driven decisions. So uh, because the new algorithms are faster, they're smarter, so you can do better predictive analytics with them. Similarly, you can do smart op automation, especially with the repetitive tasks. These can be easily automated through uh, either uh, agentic AI or some kind of bot, uh, which can do uh, a lot of your repetitive manual work, whether it's come whether it's related to distribution or to invoicing. Uh, risk detection, identify potential threats in real time, 
uh, using AI driven insights, enabling organizations to implement preventive uh, measures that safeguard resources and manage business continuity and uncertainty. And this is a very important area because uh, over the last 15, 20 years, the number of cyber security threats have increased. And therefore, there is always this focus around uh, risk mitigation and risk detection. Uh, and then finally, natural language queries. So uh, basically, uh, the ERPs are offering easier solutions for the system to be worked with. So instead of being able to know exactly all the specific steps and which window to go on to do which kind of transaction, you can now use generative AI to find out, okay, I want to do X, Y, or Z. And then some of these tools will basically give you a better step-by-step -step instruction versus uh, the good old days where uh, you are expected to know and get a very detailed training on every single step on how to perform a transaction. So definitely AI is helping with the faster onboarding for new joiners or people who are also trying to upskill themselves uh, to get more comfortable with these ERP solutions. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I've also made videos on topics like the SAP supply chain modules and the top five supply chain planning systems, which you can watch by clicking over here. Keep watching.